Doctors of Reddit, what are some of your worst experiences with anti-vaxxers? My stepmom is a pediatrician at a major hospital here in Italy. She told me the worst thing she saw was her anti-vaxxer mom wailing and screaming after her 12-year-old son died of meningitis. The mother didn't let the son get the meningitis vaccine. Stepmom told me as soon as she walked in the room. After getting called for an emergency all the son's limbs had gone necrotic and he was bleeding from practically every hole in his body including his eyes since his blood cold and congeal anymore and was like oil leaking all over. She told me she felt so pissed at the mom when she received the information that the mom hadn't vaccinated her son at all and this was all preventable. Believe I shared this before on reddit. I had a 7 year old showing signs of a serious illness. Her teachers initially noticed it before anyone else. The child had been sick for a few days that turned into a couple weeks. The teachers told the parents over and over something was wrong. The parents ignored the signs and claimed it was nothing bad or it was a cold, something minor, etc. They finally came to me and the child showed signs of measles. Within about 10, 15 minutes I indicated that this is not a cold and this seemed to be measles, based on what they verbalized to me and what I saw. To confirm, I examined the child's inner cheek and did a full body exam where she, the child not the parents, pointed out a rash both confirming measles. The parents indicated that they did not believe in vaccines because their previous doctor told them it was unnecessary as long as the child ate healthy and stayed active. It was a family friend who worked in naturopathic medicine, not a licensed doctor. After making the diagnosis and having a very tough conversation and informational session with the parents, I provided them with prescriptions to help with the measles and bring as much comfort as possible to their child. I had to break down that their child. 1. Cold of infected children and families with a very dangerous but preventable disease. 2. Cold had permanent brain slash nerve damage and 3. Could have fucking died. I didn't curse at them, but boy did I want to. The child had measles for at least a month before seeing me. To show how serious this is, measles does not show signs or symptoms in some cases for 10 to 14 days. So because they refused to vaccinate their child, at least 2-3 to three weeks of exposure to other kids and teachers went by. Somehow they were able to bypass school district requirements for getting vaccines. They did not have a religious exemption. Went to a chiropractor one time to fix some lower back pain. They had posters all over about how harmful vaccines are and that having your back adjusted regularly, even as an infant, could help fight off those kinds of diseases. I asked the receptionist if they actually believed that and she gave me a 10 minute lecture trying to justify it. I just looked and said remove me from the patient list because that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Not a doctor but worked in a pediatric ed for many years. Had a young boy come in, don't remember exactly how old maybe 8 or 9. Comes in obtunded and stiff as a board. We take home to the resuscitation room and do all the full workup stuff including a spinal tap. It was work to try to position him because he was so stiff. I'm assisting with the tap. The fellow was able to get into the intervertebral space and a milky fluid literally shoots out of the needle and onto her chest. She hooked up the manometer to measure the pressure and the fluid climbed all the way to the top and out even with the extension added to it. I had never seen that before in hundreds of taps. I don't remember pressure, but as you can imagine it was astronomically high. We got the kid as stable as we could and transferred him to the PICU. He ended up living, but lost three of his extremities due to sepsis, as well as severe cognitive impairment as a result of the high pressures. Cultures showed H flu meningitis, which is the most common form of meningitis. He was never vaccinated. The Hib vaccine is 95% effective in preventing meningitis. It was sobering to watch the parents realize their decision to withhold the vaccine has unimaginably altered the course of their lives and the life of their child. My dad's a doctor he told me that once a mother came into his office with her son for a checkup and he recommended that her 6 year old get vaccinated for measles mumps rubella because she hadn't vaccinated him yet just 4 weeks later she came in with her son and he had measles. 
She yelled at my dad for not curing him in the hour and a half they were there. She got angry and went to the ghetto pediatrician who sold her the same medication and later she still didn't vaccinate her son because aluminum and toxins that's exactly how my dad said it. Not a medical doctor, but I'm a university professor of biological sciences. I was teaching a course this semester that covers how to appropriately conduct research in a variety of ways as well as how to perform personal, not publication-worthy, research. I remember hearing one of my students say that they were anti-vax at the beginning of the semester. Didn't really bother me because I realized that they were also part of one of my courses where I just so happened to have a lecture planned to analyze Wakefield's MMR autism paper, find points of major error slash bias, determine the severity of the errors, how to fix them, and discuss his methodologies and results while being compared to the dozens of studies released after his that utterly destroyed his paper. After that lecture, I never saw the student again. Unfortunately, this taught me that when you deal with this group of people, there isn't really a way of convincing them otherwise. They have been brainwashed and they like their confirmation caves. I'm a veterinarian. Every day I have to convince some reluctant pet owner that I'm not in the pocket of big rabies and I'm making recommendations for preventative care based on state law, medical research and good judgment. The memorable people are the ones who listen to me, my advice saves their pet's life in one way or another, and they are still pissed about it. Your dog definitely needs a Lyme vaccine. Why? It's not perfect. Your last dog died of Lyme nephritis like 2 months ago. This vaccine is 93% effective. Some people. Not a doctor, but my 8th grade English teacher was anti-vax and pregnant at the time. She would constantly tell us about how bad vaccines were and stuff. So one day the science teacher spent an entire lesson just talking to us about how vaccines are good and don't cause autism. A few years later I was talking to my friend from 8th grade who still talks to our science teacher and he said that the English teacher's baby had autism and wasn't vaccinated. I'm not a doctor, but I do have mild autism. I made the mistake of saying that I was autistic in a public place to my friend. This lady heard and came up to ask if I was vaccinated. I said that I was and she had the most triumphant look on her face. I realized my mistake and left right away with my friend. I'm not a doctor but I have a story that I'm pretty sure that fits here. We had neighbors that have become lifelong family friends. They have a daughter the same age as my sister and she got diagnosed with autism shortly after getting her MMR. A couple months after her diagnosis the paper came out saying vaccines caused autism and the mom believed it. It was new information, no one really was sure what to believe. Anyway fast forward 4 years and the mom is pregnant again. She knows it getting her new baby vaccinated with the MMR. She did, because, in her words, I'd rather have another autistic child than one in the IQ. The new baby is completely typical and she now doesn't believe in the anti-vax shit. My point is that even the height of the autism being caused by vaccine scare she was smart enough to get her kids vaccinated, and I will never understand why people don't protect their kids as well as herd immunity. Had a patient come to the hospital for possible heart attack. I asked if they had gotten a flu shot or the pneumonia vaccine. They went into a long rant about how vaccines are poison and they don't take any medication because they swim in the ocean and it purifies all the toxins that they acquire. Then they started having chest pain, so I gave them a nitroglycerine pill. They spat it out because they hated it. Well, you don't take your meds for high blood pressure and high cholesterol you will have a heart attack. So not just anti-vax, but fully anti-medicine and science. I went to a school that is known for its nursing program, so we had a lot of student nurses and RNs who would come back from their internships and jobs with anti-vax stories. The worst one by far was a student who met a mother, who also happened to be in nursing school, that explained that she would not be vaccinating any of her children, and was mad she had to get a tuberculosis vaccine to work in a hospital. The student spent about 30 minutes trying to explain to this mother that she could easily kill her kids, to which she told her, at least they'll die naturally and not of mercury poisoning, 